Alright guys, you seem to be into the Halloween 2018 re-review, so what the hell? We're going back and watching Halloween Kills. So I just got done. If you remember my last review, I was pretty middle of the road. I thought it was very entertaining. I thought it was pretty silly, and the dialogue was kind of hokey. But overall, I gave it a thumbs up. So it was interesting going back to this after kind of like letting up a little bit on Halloween 2018. I was kind of nervous. How was I going to feel about Kills? I certainly thought I liked it more than 18 at the time, but would going back to this middle child be any different this time? There's only one way to find out. Just like the original Halloween 2, Halloween Kills takes place the same night, virtually moments later, which is something that apparently was not supposed to happen until Universal was like, hey, this made a lot of money, guys. Let's do three of them. You know, the middle child, where we're really not trying to add too, too much to the story. My money says that Halloween Ends was supposed to be Ends, the whole time, but without the middle film really happening. Maybe there would have been some parts put in, but I think this was like a last minute movie idea, quite frankly. But with that being said, some of the stuff in Halloween Kills I thought lived up to the enthusiasm I had the first time watching it. I think without question, the flashback scene in the beginning is freaking incredible. I mean, they really did a good job setting the tone for the late 70s. And when we go into the Myers house and see that Myers mask and that performance done in that house, it was still freaking cool. I loved it. Which I know it's interesting. There's a lot of contention. I noticed with the flashback, some people find it to be a little bit less than, while others find it to be really, really awesome. Me personally, I think it is incredible. I loved it. And I almost wish we could have gotten an entire movie based off of that, which you really couldn't do because... Then you'd almost be making Halloween 2, but doing something different, because then we'd really have to get into the storyline, so to speak, of the brother-sister thing, possibly. But I just want to give kudos to them recreating the 1978 vibe, continuing the night he came home. That was pretty damn awesome. It's also cool that we know that that Loomis cameo was done by practical effects with Chris Nelson. A lot of us thought it was a CGI Loomis. It just goes to show that prosthetic makeup is still used today and used in really cool ways. And I would almost take it as a compliment that people were saying, oh, it was a CGI Loomis, when in fact it wasn't. I was guilty of it too. I think we all thought it was a CGI Loomis, when in fact it was just really good makeup effects. Okay, so let's just get into it. Halloween Kills. You know, going back to this movie this time, I gotta say it was really the one that I feel is more of just the this is the pure entertainment entry. Now, looking back now, I almost feel like if you're going to want a Halloween film to watch that you just want to get some entertainment and not take seriously, this is the one. While I did light up a little bit on 18, I still think that Kills is the more enjoyable film at a moment's notice for sure. You know, you could easily throw this movie on without watching the other two and get about as much as you would want out of a Halloween film in a lot of ways, but not every way. The music is good. I did notice the score a bit more in this one, where I feel like it was kind of lacking the previous times I would watch it. You just kind of got to look out for it. There's some explosive scenes in this one. I really, really dig the house burning scene where the fire department shows up. This Myers is insane. It rivals the beastly brutality of the Rob Zombie Michael Myers stuff, which I'm a real big fan of. So James Drew Courtney did a great job. I feel like Courtney really laid it all on the line in this movie. And I love the fact that he's really brutal and intense. I know that is a characteristic that some people don't prefer. I know people prefer the more angelic, almost Nick Castle vibe you get from the first movie. But me, I've always been a big fan of the brute, mean son of a bitch, Myers. You know what I really feel like this movie feels like? I feel like Halloween Kills is like one of those 80s slasher films that came out in the heyday where everybody's taking it seriously and trying to do a great job. But it's just silly. Let's just be real, man. Them having the speech at the diner where Tommy Doyle's up and it's supposed to be a talent show when he just talks. What the hell's going on? It's all just over the top and it's hard to take seriously. The Evil Dies Tonight chance, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I don't know if they really were trying to be serious or not. That's something I, I, I still to this day wonder about. But it comes off so over the top. I laugh then and I laugh now, but I think I just understand that this movie is the middle child. I feel like this movie was just added, trying not to mess up the idea that they had for the last one, but they wanted to make it dramatic, and that's cool, but god damn, man. Evil Dice Tonight is just ringing in my ears still. The whole Lori in the hospital bed thing, I almost want to dislike, but I really like it in Halloween 2, but that's still like a, just a very different movie. I still feel like the original Halloween 2 is the best continuation of Halloween 1. But with kills, whether it's a little bit cringy or not, 
This movie is pretty damn entertaining. Really like some of the Michael scenes in here, especially when he goes to that old couple's house and just raises hell with those mercury light bulbs and the stabbing. It's intense. I, it's actually a big turnoff for a lot of people. And I guess I understand that, but again, damn, I love the Brutal Myers. So I guess I can keep this one short and sweet. How do I feel about Halloween Kills now? Really about the same. I don't take it that seriously. I don't think it's a quote-unquote really good movie. But in terms of a Halloween entertaining film, you bet your ass this one's really entertaining and fun to watch. Michael is a brute son of a bitch. The dialogue you can laugh at, not necessarily with, but oh well. I'd like a lot of 80 slasher films that are basically exactly what I'm describing. And it's really fun to watch, and the gore is crazy. I also like seeing the Silver Shamrock kids get decimated in this. It's pretty funny. And Michael is just a beast in this one. And that's a personal taste that I like. So, Halloween Kills, I can see this becoming the fan favorite over time. If you're not already a bigger fan of this one, I think this one is an accidental horror classic in a sense. It's just a brutal, nasty, fun movie. It's silly, you really can't take it seriously, and I think it's funny if they really did try to make this serious, dramatic movie, because it just does not play off like that at all to me. But it's seriously entertaining, so I'm probably going to stay pretty close to the same with Kills. Really entertaining, and I think I do like it more than 2018 still. If you're in for just a fun, brutal ride, this is the one for you, as long as you don't mind really silly dialogue. The Big John and Little John scenes, too, are still fun. I like those characters a lot. They're silly and hokey, and I enjoy their scenes. They're somewhat of a highlight of the film for me. Anyway, guys, so Halloween Kills, I still think fares about the same. It's silly, but it's so entertaining and gory and fun, and I enjoyed revisiting it. Honestly, the Laurie Strode stuff in this is probably my least favorite, but that's really neither here or there because she's not doing too much. She's just in the hospital bed. But anyway, guys, I still enjoy Kills. I think it's thoroughly entertaining. Just don't take it seriously. A huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, these videos would not be possible. If you want to get early access to all my videos, private live streams, music recordings, music covers, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to all my patrons.